So the thing about merging of queries is if you have two queries that are separate that you want to put together into one single one, since you are basically combining them side by side, now the most important thing there is they have to have a meeting point that you can use to join them together. So imagine if you have two acts like this and you wanted to make a perfect circle. You will not go about that by combining the two acts together this way because that will not make a lot of sense. What you want to do is to figure out that this particular point from the first arc is similar to this point in the second arc. And this point in the first arc is also similar to this point in the second arc. Therefore, what you want to do is to find a way to join the points together. In which case, what you want to do is carry the first arc this way and use the second arc's points where they look similar to also combine that one as well. All right, so the reason why I have to show you this is because I have a spin yet again. So if I go to my Power Query Essentials folder and I open up the workbook Merge Queries 2, I have in this singular Excel worksheet two data tables. Now, that's one other thing with Power Query. So if we're going to connect this um, Excel workbook uh, to Power Query, we will have access to these two distinct data tables and we'll be able to connect to them separately like that. So in the first table, which is called, if I come here to click on my table design, this first table is called revenue. And if I go to the second table, you'll see that one is sales cost. So what we have here is a two year data set uh, that is based quarterly for two companies, Microsoft and Google. So let's assume that we have business that we do with Microsoft and Google and we gain some revenue from them in transaction amount. So the first set of the data has two years of data from quarter one to quarter four in each of those years for Microsoft and for Google and the amounts we realize from those two companies. And then the second part of the data has, again, two years of data that is also based quarterly for the same Microsoft and the same Google for marketing costs. So if we are going to combine these two data tables together, so let's say that I would like to bring in the marketing cost right here. So I have just one singular data, bearing in mind that we have essentially the same set of data for both of them. So the question is, what figure or what value am I supposed to have right here? That's almost simple enough because it is the same 2020 the same Q1 and the same Microsoft that I have exactly on this other side, the same 2020, the same Q1 and the same Microsoft. So basically I can just pick this 47,000 and drop it right here to say that I am merging this, my two tables together. However, by the time I get to the second and the subsequent records, there is no way for me to just lift those two columns or lift the other column verbatim from there and just drop it right here on the first table because there has to be something that will make it fit before I can say that I want to merge the two queries. So for example, if I were to carry the second uh, cost verbatim that way to come to drop it here, then you know that I will be mismatching the values because the value of 28,000 is for 2020Q1 of Google. And if I put it right here, this is not 2020Q1 of Google, rather this is 2020Q2 of Microsoft. So before I'll be able to merge the two queries, I need to ensure that I select the columns that will give me the perfect match for me to do my merging. Essentially, for this particular data set, for me to have a perfect match, I need to ensure that I am picking the company name for a particular quarter and for a particular year, and I will use that to derive their marketing cost by matching that with the company name for a particular quarter and for a particular year on the marketing cost table. So let's go and import these two tables into our Power Query. So here in my Power Query, since I am already in the Power Query editor and I want to bring in some new data sets, I will simply go to new source right here. And I want to bring in from Excel workbook, 
and I'm connecting to number three file merge queries two. So when I click open, I can see the name of the worksheet transactions and I can also see those two data tables in Excel. So I will simply tick the boxes for both of them and I'm going to click OK. So I expect them to look good for the revenue and the sales cost because they are already formatted as proper data tables in Excel. So what I want to do now is to bring in the marketing costs from the sales cost query to the revenue query as a new column. So I'll go ahead to my home tab, go ahead to my combined queries section. I will select merge queries, merge queries, and my first table remains the revenue table. I'm going to use a drop down to select the second table as the sales cost. Now, instead of selecting just one column, I have to select three columns to ensure that I have a perfect fit and I have a perfect match to do this merging of tables correctly. So when I select the year column, I will hold control to select quarter and I will also hold control to select customer name. So in that order, I have year as the first column, quarter as the second column, customer name as the third column. I have to make sure that I do exactly the same thing in the other query that I am merging with. So I will not go ahead to select customer name first, I have to select in the exact same order. So I will select year, hold control and select quarter, then hold control and select customer name. And when I click OK, I will have this my new column that contains the entire data set that we have in the sales cost query. And that's why it's not going to show the raw values, it's going to be displaying as tables. As a matter of fact, if I go to an empty place inside one of these cells, for example, I can click there and I'll be able to see the entire content as it matches with the sales cost query. So, but I only need one column from there. I just need the marketing cost. So I will go ahead to expand the table here and I will make sure that I untick everything first so I can tick only the marketing cost and I'm going to click OK. And this way I can have the right values. So for example, if you ask me, what is Google um, cost for 2020 Q2? So if you check this row number six is 2020 Q2 for Google. And the cost here says 47,000. If we match that directly on the sales cost, look for 2020 Q2 for Google. This is 2020 Q2 for Google on row number four, and you will see that the amount matches correctly.